All right, everybody, we did it. We made it to Friday Eve. What's the most, uh, yeah, woo, we did it. What is the most annoying nickname for a day of the week? Is it Hump Day? Is it Friday? Is it Friday Eve? Eh, it's your call. That's what we should have talked about today. That is not our topic. But, well, you know what? This is your newscast. You can talk about whatever you want in the comments there. We'll check them out. Uh, how about the weather? You want to talk about the weather? Nothing really to talk about, right? Kind of boring. Fine. It's fine. Sunny-ish. Whatever. So this is winter. Average high 27. It's going to be like 30. So it'll be fine. Uh, not a lot of snow in the forecast. Chance of a white Christmas. Uh, I don't want to say that I don't believe Riley's forecast, but I do believe that weather people put a chance for like a, like a negligible amount of snow in the seven day forecast before Christmas just to give us hope. I think it's just, I think it's nonsense. So I'll believe it when it snows. And if it snows uh, next Tuesday or Wednesday, I will be right here admitting that I was wrong. How about this? Let's talk about the sequels and the reboots, all the rage these days in Hollywood. News came that there's not going to be a Lizzie McGuire revi revival. I know. I know. You're crushed, aren't you? You're like, I wanted to see Hillary Duff and what Lizzie McGuire was like today. There's Hillary, she, you know, still acting, doing great. She said they talked about it, but uh, it's not going to happen, despite everyone's best efforts, is what she said on Instagram, which I think is how you say somebody messed this up royally, because I had a big payday coming my way from this reboot, uh, but they wouldn't do it the way I wanted. She said she wanted, uh, there was a dispute over like what kind of character Lizzie would be, wanted to stay true to that. So we thought uh, this would be fun to talk about. Take yourself back to your childhood, or, you know, when you're in your 20s or teenager, what TV series would you like to see rebooted? I have my uh, series that I would like to see a reboot of. Um, love to see kind of what do you think would be the throwback where you'd like to see it redone? Uh, let us know on the WCCO TV Facebook page. We'll read through a few of your comments in just a moment. We start with more bad news in the city of St. Paul. They have had a spate of violence uh, over this last year and homicides are at a 25 year high. This story very, I mean, obviously each one is troubling, but this story, a guy just driving near University in Snelling last night at 10. This is the first version of what happened from police. So bear in mind, this is pretty fresh stuff, but they said this guy heard a gunshot, then realized it was him. He was shot. So he calls police, gets rushed to Regents Hospital, and then he dies. This is the city's 32nd homicide, as I said, the highest in more than 25 years. Another round of rules to fight COVID-19 in Minnesota start this weekend. Uh, here's where we're at. Restaurant, dining rooms, and gyms are closed right now. Uh, youth sports on pause. Starting Saturday, here's the flip. Outdoor dining for restaurants. Oh, great. It's going to be 20. Can't wait to sit outside and enjoy a nice bowl of soup. Uh, gyms can open 25% capacity. Youth sports will be able to start practice on January 4th. Some restaurants say, look, reopening outdoor dining is not enough. And even the governor said, I'm not an idiot. Like, I get it. This is not going to help most restaurants being open for outdoor dining. But the tap rooms asked for it. And so it might make sense to go to a tap room and have a beer outdoors by a fire pit. We have seen restaurants, not a lot, but some openly violating the rules. And they started doing this yesterday. Restaurants uh, indoor will be closed through at least January 11th. But a coalition of restaurants have said, look, we can't make it that long. We can't last. Our business will not last. And so we are ignoring the governor's order and we are opening up. There's no way that our staff could get through Christmas without it. There's no way we could make it another two months um, not opening. All right. Alibi Drinkery opened its doors Wednesday to customers. Some of the video from in there. Holy moly. It was jam-packed. Here it is. Here's some of the video from somebody who was inside. The owner, Lisa Zarza, says no restrictions. So no social distancing. No one's wearing a mask. Uh, this looks like a picture from January of last year, pre-COVID time. 
it's nice to finally be able to go out and you know meet people and pay too much for beer that I have at home. It's just it's the it's the social connection that is what I miss the most, and that's why I'm here. In a statement, Attorney General Keith Ellison didn't really mince words about the uh, businesses that said they were going to open. He said, you're putting people at risk. People will get sick and die because of you. The AG's office said it will hold establishments accountable. And this place in Lakeville, actually, they uh, came after and said, we are going to suspend your liquor license. So uh, we'll see. The state said only a handful violated this order on Wednesday, but many more have said they're going to vi uh, violate it starting Friday. So we'll see what happens. The state did say Alibi's liquor license is going to be suspended for blatantly violating the governor's rule. That'll be suspended for 60 days. Uh, another business in Princeton also got a suspension notice, and we'll probably see more of this. We saw one of the businesses that we profiled yesterday for opening up had the local police and the state health department there, and so they did agree to shut down. Uh, indoor gatherings, this kind of social gathering, I think in many ways, these rules are a bigger deal to more people, right, as we approach Christmas. So they're saying, look, we want to make this as safe as we can. So the safest thing is to have no one other than your own household. The next safest is to have one additional household in, max of 10 people, limit your time, and wear masks. Outdoor, they say you can have fire pits again, Two additional households, outdoors max of 15 people. So I could see people like doing stuff in the garage, maybe. Fire pits as well. Thanks to our friend Ron here. I'm loaded up with firewood, ready to rock. Gyms can reopen this weekend. It'll be a little different. Uh, the gyms were open at 25% capacity, so that won't be that different. But the pools and showers stay closed. The big change is everybody has to wear a mask while they're working out. And you have to pose like these two. You just, that's the rules. You got to be farther apart than those guys, though. Who's at the gym that close to somebody? My goodness, it's not a dating club. Anyway, uh, you got to wear a mat. Maybe it is a dating club. I don't know. I'm an old married guy. What do I know? Uh, group fitness starts January 4th. Lifetime Fitness pushed for this. They said they appreciate the step forward. And I want to congratulate the folks in the, in the fitness industry. You have figured out smart ways and thought about things. So we, we hear you on that. Sun's rising. Things are different. Things are changing. But we are not out of the woods yet. Republican Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka reacted to the changes, saying in part, if Governor Walz thought people wanted a matrix of rules and guidelines to follow to reopen, he's severely mistaken. People will follow simple common sense rules to keep each other safe, allow them to operate their business and get kids back in school. Governor Walz did sign the $216 million relief package with money going to small businesses and workers. State says you don't have to apply for it. It'll just show up, should arrive the first week of 2021. Congress says a federal relief package should be coming soon. Taco Bell bringing back its popular nacho fries again for a limited time. First introduced in 2018 for a buck. Now it's going to be a buck 39. Along with the fries, the $1 loaded nacho ta taco, nacho taco, and bacon club chalupa are coming back as well. All of the items are back on the menu starting on Christmas Eve. Thrilling. Uh, let's talk about holiday baking. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't select that story to be in this thing. Uh, cookies. You baking cookies for Christmas? Of course you are. What do people make the most? Chocolate chip cookies. I love chocolate chip cookies, but is this a common thing that people bake for Christmas? Who did they interview for this thing? This one poll survey. Like, <laughs> atheists. <laughs> it's rotten. <laughs> I, it's just it's so weird. You're like, it's the holidays. You know what I'm craving? Toll House cookies. I don't know. Strange. Peanut butter second, sugar cookies third, then gingerbread and snickerdoodles. Man, I think snickerdoodle, most underrated cookie? Maybe. Maybe so. Ginger cookie, molasses cookies. Those are my three underrated cookies. Okay, what do we think about this Wisconsin teenager? He was feeling the holiday spirit, supposedly. Uh, he was driven to try out some new decorations, driven. Look, here's the car. It's funny. Nice car, right? What kind of 18-year-old has, this looks like a brand new car. This kid's living it up. He uh, thought it'd be cool. It is cool, looks great. This would be great to drive in a parade, less great to drive on the highway. The Wisconsin State uh, Patrol pulled him over. <laughs> They're like, buddy. Like, we love the lights, we love the lights, but no, you cannot roll around the Badger State Highways like a Whoville disco ball. 
Uh, so they pulled him over. The state trooper was not a Grinch about this, though. She pretty much said she really liked the lights, but she's pulling me over for the lights. She asked for a picture, and she took a picture, and it ended up on Facebook everywhere. <laughs> yeah, of course it did. This, this whole thing has gone viral. Tyler's loving it. He gets a warning, no ticket. And he said, I'm not taking the lights off. I'm just going to stay on the back roads. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he should have got the ticket. It's not the safest thing. It is, it is, I mean, maybe like just put him on the front. Like it's a little aggressive. All right, back to the talker today. Shows or movies you'd like to see rebooted? Can't wait to see what you said. Your favorite uh, shows that you would like to see brought back to life. Peggy says Little House on the Prairie. Hey, we're hiding the controls. There they go. Peggy says uh, $6 million man. That'd be a fun one. I like that. Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. Yes, that was a great show, Amanda. That'd be fun. That really could come back. Yep, it had some great issues. Mm hmm I like it. Dawson's Creek. Oh, yeah. Boy, Dawson's Creek. That was like, that was Katie Holmes, right? Before the whole Tom Cruise. Oof, poor Katie. You know, sometimes we make bad choices in life. It's fine. Here's, uh, I, I bet she got a nice settlement, though. You know, Tom Cruise has some money. Linda Nelson, Mod, Mod Squad. All right, Mod Squad's fun. The Office. Oh, can you reboot The Office? I mean, obviously the American version was a reboot of the, uh, or a ripoff, if you will, of the British version. Friends. Yeah, oh, think of how much, uh, how crazy people would go if Friends came back, right? Uh, the A-Team, little B.A. Baracus. Yes. Pity the fool, Julie. I like that. I like that a lot. And then Charlie's Angels, says Kathy. I was trying to find the music for my, the song I would like to, or the show I would like to see come back. Anybody remember uh, The Greatest American Hero? Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. That one? And it'd start and you'd be like, one, two, three and then you're flying just i tried to re-watch that with the kids i'm like you guys got to see this show it's so good it's a little outdated <laughs> special effects not so good back in the early 80s uh thanks for hanging out with us on the morning update heather brown will have you covered here tomorrow because i'm lazy in december and taking fridays off so we'll see you back here i'll see you next week and we'll see you back here tomorrow